Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this second Sunday of Christmas. Despite the fact that many of you have probably passed away all of your holiday decorations a few days ago, today is the ninth day of Christmas. That's the um, nine ladies dancing one. Okay. So today we'll take some time to sing your favorite Christmas carols before we put them away for the year. Um, so you might want to take some time to hunt through the hymnal for the ones that you love the best. In the green hymnal, we're going to start on 39. There's only a couple in the blue hymnal, one of which is We Three Kings, and maybe we'll save that to the last. Because this Sunday falls between two kind of significant events of the Christmas story that we never hear on Christmas Eve. Um, so we'll include what happens on the eighth day of Jesus' life at the beginning of our service. And at the end, uh, we'll talk about the arrival of the wise men on the day of Epiphany, which is January 6th, which will be Thursday, before we gather again on Sunday. And you may have noticed that the TV is up. Um, our Synod Bishop, um, Craig Schweitzer, has prepared a sermon for us today. Uh, so we'll get to hear um, him proclaim the gospel and um, interpret that gospel for us today as well. Are you guys going to start quilting again on Tuesday? All right. And I think the ladies over at First Lutheran will start back up on Tuesday as well. Confirmation resumes this week. Are you going to do Bible study on Thursday? Yeah. Two o'clock, Bible study. All right. Here in the basement, all are welcome. And I know it's like Welka, like women of the ELCA, but if boys would like to show up, men would like to show up, we would let you. So um, then just looking ahead, um, your annual meeting will be the um, last Sunday of the month of January. And it will be the 23rd at First Lutheran. Are there other announcements for today? Right. The new usher list is up for 2022, so if you want to get a jump on your month, go ahead and sign up. There's also a new sheet for treats and greetings. All right. So for those um, service opportunities, there's a list in the hallway, and I know that January and February we have ushers. So. I'm going to say, let's sit until we figure out our song, okay? We gather in the name of God, the creator of light, Jesus, the light of the world, and the Holy Spirit, the light who illumines our path. In this season of light, let us go before God, 
and confess how our words and actions contribute to the darkness instead of adding to the light. God of love and light, we confess that we are not always the light bearers you desire us to be. We shine a spotlight on the transgressions of others while trying to keep our own sins hidden in the dark. We burn bridges by being impatient, opinionated, and judgmental. We inflame others by lashing out in anger. We go through our days enveloped in the gloom of fear and doubt. We let our witness become a smoldering ember until it dies out completely. Forgive us, Jesus, the everlasting light. Come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Teach us to walk as children of light, surrounded by your love, forgiveness, and healing. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. God is light, and in God there is no darkness at all. If we walk in the light of God, as God is light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. Amen. All right, does anyone have a favorite hymn? Nancy. 62. I'm going to guess that's the bells of Christmas. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> All right, let's stand. 62 in your green hymnal, The Bells of Christmas. <laughs>
I last saw you guys on Christmas Eve, right? And we read out of my little book. We didn't read it all. That's right. Clever. Clever boy. So, this is just like it is in the Bible, except that it has all these pretty pictures. Um, but my book did leave out something, right? We've got Mary and Joseph, they go from Nazareth to Bethlehem. They have a baby in a barn because there's no room for them in the inn. The angels go and they sing to the shepherds. The shepherds go and see the baby. And that's where we stopped, right? The shepherds went out to tell everybody about it. And then there's another little piece that is in, in the Bible. And it says, After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. That's the one line they skip. Okay? They, don't, they don't put that part in there. Do you guys know what day yesterday was? Yeah. What was it? New Year's Day. New Year's Day. We call it something else in the church here because it's eight days, right? We just talked about eight days after Jesus was born. And I have this ornament that hangs on my tree. Can you read? No? Should we find somebody who can read? What does it say? Yeah. His name is Jesus. And it's two little kids around the manger and Jesus in there. Because at, at eight days, then... Mary and Joseph took Jesus to the temple, and, and he was named, officially named, um, named Jesus there. And names are important, right? right? Names tell us some complex things. Um, we, if we know somebody's name, we know something pretty important about them, right? And if somebody knows our name, that know, they know something about us, and they can connect with us. But Jesus' name is the most powerful name of all. And on this day we celebrate the privilege and the power of calling God by name, as well as how deeply we know God and are known by God through Jesus. So, right? So then when we pray, do you never ever notice that when we pray, we end praise prayers with things like in Jesus' name, right? Because Jesus' name is very, very powerful, and that means that we know who Jesus is, and Jesus knows who we are. Let's pray. Gracious God, we are thankful for the, for the love that you give us through Jesus, that Jesus came to earth to live with us, to know us, to love us. Fill our hearts with love for you. Through Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys can go back down. It always takes me a little while to get back on track here. All right, now we're going to do another song.
Let's pray together for the prayer of the day found in your bulletin. Almighty God, you have filled all the earth with the light of your incarnate word. By your grace, empower us to reflect your light in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We'll continue with our readings. Do we have a reader today? Thanks, Barb. We'll kind of have to come up and around. reading is from Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I'm going to bring them from the land of the north, and gather them from the farthest, farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor, together. A great company they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water, in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, He who scattered Israel will gather him, and will keep him as a shepherd of flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob, and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. We will read Psalm 147 responsibly. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bar to your gates. He has blessed your children with the name. He has established peace on your borders. He satisfies you with the finest wheat. He sends out his command to the earth, and his word runs it very swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters hoarfrost like ashes. He scatters his tail like breadcrumbs. Who can stand against his rule? He sends forth his word and melts them. He blows with his wind, and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob. His statutes and his judges to Israel. He has not done so to any other nation. To them he has not revealed his judgments. Hallelujah. Our second reading is from Ephesians chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, <coughs> just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. 
Now we'll see if technology is our friend today. Let's see if it's already gone down. Hopefully this will just play, and we will see um, see and hear Bishop Craig Schweitzer. On this second Sunday of Christmas, the Holy Gospel comes to us from the first chapter of the Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What is coming to being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came to testify as he came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He comes after me, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. For his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, the one who has come to us this day. Amen. First of all, Merry Christmas. Second, I get to be in a different congregation of our synod nearly every Sunday of the year, about 40 to 45 weeks out of the year. It's one of the great joys of serving as your bishop. And today is a very special day because I'm able to be with many of you in many different locations and congregations across the Synod at exactly the same time. And I give thanks and praise for that. And third, I want to bring you greetings on this second Sunday of Christmas on behalf of the Western North Dakota Synod, your brothers and sisters across this Synod, more than 160 congregations, more than 50,000 brothers and sisters serving in the Western two-thirds of our great state of North Dakota. I bring greetings and Christmas greetings from across the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, about 9,000 congregations, 3 million or so folks serving in the United States and the Caribbean, and I bring you greetings on this Christmas of, on behalf of the Lutheran World Federation, of which our denomination of the ELCA is the only representative of from the United States. LWF connects together 148 different Lutheran denominations, over 77 million brothers and sisters serving together in 99 different countries, sharing God's ministry and mission around the world. Lutheran Christians who are part of LWF actually serve on every continent on our planet except Antarctica, and uh, maybe someday soon we'll even be serving on Antarctica. Many of you have heard those greetings from me before. I offer them every chance that I get on behalf of our Synod, on behalf of the ELCA and LWF, because they're important for us to hear. 
They remind us of just how connected we are together and how big this church is that we are connected <coughs> to as we do the life-giving, grace-filled work that the gospel of Jesus calls us into each and every day of the year, not just on days like Christmas or in seasons like Advent. Throughout the days of Christmas and the days of Advent that precede Christmas, we hear and see many themes, themes of love, peace, goodwill, family, hope, anticipation, light, a savior born to us. Even the theme of a new year enters into part of our story in these 12 days of Christmas. What's amazing about Christmas themes, though, is, is how romantic they are and how they live together in such incredible beauty and harmony. Our hopes and dreams are captured in so many beautiful ways through the images we have wrapped around Christmas. And so why do we rush so quickly to pack them up and put them back into boxes in the darkness of a storage room until next year? And we hear themes of Christmas and we relish their beauty each and every year. But at the end of the Christmas season, which will approach us this week, I find myself asking, do they transform us in any way beyond Christmas Day? What would we look like as individuals, as congregations, as a little Christian community that we're connected to, if we stopped putting the themes of Christmas back in storage and we tried to live with them throughout the year? Now, many of you know that I'm a musician. At one time in my life, my primary vocation a long time ago was as a professional musician. The idea of theme is very important to musicians and to music in general. I mean, music uses theme to transform how a listener is actually going to engage in the art form. Theme makes music come alive beyond little black circles that are written on a piece of music or maybe guitar chords that are written across a piece of notebook paper. If all that we had were the little black circles on paper, we'd actually miss the beauty of music entirely. And if all we had was one theme, music would have become boring after a very short while. It would have become boring hundreds if not thousands of years ago. I think the same can be said of themes we celebrate during Advent and Christmas. If we only see Christmas themes as black dots on a little piece of paper that come out of storage once a year, we really won't fully experience the beauty that we can create in our world because of Christmas throughout the year. I want us to listen to a, a musical example to show this. Uh, one of the most famous musical themes known in the history of humankind, the four notes of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, written in the early 19th century. These four simple notes sound boring when that's all we hear. The simple beauty we hear during, the, during Christmas begins in much the same way. Maybe a simple smile to someone we don't know. Maybe it's the first batch of Christmas cookies coming out of the oven. Maybe it's the first gift we buy with great anticipation of what the recipient's reaction may be. But does Christmas end there with just four simple notes? It's a great gift to hear John's gospel today. We don't get to hear these words very often in worship, and definitely not during the Christmas season, because there are only a few times when we actually have two Sundays to worship together between Christmas and the feast day of Epiphany on January 6th. The prologue, or the beginning of John's gospel, is the birth story of sorts of Jesus. And it's obvious that it's an unusual birth story when compared to the other Gospels, when compared to the birth stories that we so often hear on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day worship services. There's no Mary or Joseph or shepherds or angels or wise men or animals keeping watch over the baby Jesus who's lying peacefully and quietly in a manger because that's what babies do all the time. John instead gives us the word. 
It says that the Word became flesh and lived among us. And as a result, we have received grace upon grace. I don't think John is necessarily saying that God's grace wasn't quite enough before, so just to make sure you needed to add a little more grace. Grace upon grace is a way of wrapping all of the themes of Christmas together and showing us a way of living that can always be Christmas. John is showing us just how intimate our relationship with God is through the birth of Christ. A relationship that didn't begin with Christ's birth and end with Christ's death on the cross. It's a relationship with a single theme of God's love and presence with us that you and I share as children of God. And as children of God, we have been and continue to be given grace upon grace. And music, a composer or a songwriter, takes that a basic theme like the one I played a few minutes ago from Beethoven and uses it to weave other textures and themes around But if you listen carefully, you'll always be able to hear that original theme. The original theme of John's gospel is that God has always been with us. That God is with us today. And that God will be with us in whatever will come our way in the days to come. As we journey with that theme in this new year, how will we carry Christmas with us and not simply pack it up in a box and put it back in storage for another year? The theme of Christmas, peace, may involve restoring a broken relationship or a distant relationship with another person in our life. The theme of Christmas, joy, may be discovering new passion and meaning in our daily work and vocations that God calls us into. The theme of Christmas hope may encourage us to participate more deeply in the life of our own community of faith as we embrace new opportunities for mission and ministry that God is leading us into in 2022. What does that look like? What does that sound like to you and to the communities in which you live? In music, here's what Beethoven did with the simple four-note theme that he introduced at the very beginning of his symphony. Out of four simple notes comes great beauty. Other themes enter and weave around each other in an unfolding tapestry that is unlike anything ever heard before. In the middle of all of that, as all of that is happening in this beautiful piece of music, we never lose the unity of the original theme. Perhaps our New Year's resolutions will reflect the themes we celebrate and hold near to our hearts during Advent and Christmas. We may see new themes beginning to be added and removed as we move throughout the year. But we must never pack away the beauty of the original theme that we share as sisters and brothers in the one body of Christ. Because we are blessed in amazing ways by the original theme that God is with us always and in all ways. We don't know for sure what that's going to look like or what that's going to sound like in the coming year as we experience God's grace upon grace. As followers of the risen Jesus, we know that we do believe that the original theme will always be with us. God is here. For that, for that truth above all truths, we give God thanks and praise and join the unending symphony of God's good creation given to us in Christ Jesus, the Savior.
this second Sunday of Christmas, the Holy Gospel comes to us from the first chapter of the Gospel according to St. Let's stand as we profess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed as printed in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We'll continue with the prayers of the people. I'll end with the petition, Merciful God, to respond, receive our prayer. Joining our voices with the heavenly host and Christians throughout time and space, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You make yourself known in the gift of language in diverse forms. Draw our attention to those who communicate through sign, braille, and technology. Make your church a place where all methods of communication are celebrated. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Creating God, the sun greets us anew each morning. Thank you for waking us up today to witness and share your abundance. Awaken us always to your wisdom and deepen our care for your natural world. We pray especially for those impacted by fires in Colorado. 
Merciful God, receive our prayer. Emmanuel, in your name, we are assured that you are with us. Train nations and peoples to honor and respect one another, especially those whose names and identities have been mistreated, neglected, or oppressed. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You adopt us as your beloved ones. Accompany parents and children navigating the adoption process, especially those in the foster system. Sustain those struggling with infertility or pregnancy loss. Tenderly embrace all those in need in mind, body, or spirit. Merciful God, you journey with us through change. Guide those assuming new roles or making transitions in their families, workplaces, or communities. As the seasons and the calendar change, equip us for unexpected challenges. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We give you thanks for all who modeled lives of loving service. Lead us in your grace until with all your saints we enter the fullness of your glory. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Rejoicing in your word made flesh among us, we commend these prayers to you, confident of your grace and love made known to us in Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of peace with one another as you are comfortable. In the midst of our worship, we pause to give thanks for all that God has given us. Um, the abundance, the grace upon grace bestowed upon us um, through our God incarnate through Jesus Christ. And we take time to offer back with our time and our talents and our treasures to continue God's work and mission in this world. And so um, we place our offering place at the back of the worship space for your giving, either coming or going. Um, and now we give thanks for those offerings. Let's pray. God of light, our world is a very dark place. Therefore, we offer the gift of ourselves, our time, and our resources, trusting you will use them to set the world aglow with your loving presence. May our offerings continue to shine brightly before others, so they may see our good works and give glory to you. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. Before we continue with Thanksgiving, can I get an additional person who will serve bread today? Thanks, Brett. We'll continue with the great Thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered together by the power of the Holy Spirit, let's pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and dine. The banquet of the Lord awaits all 
who hunger and thirst for God's grace upon grace and unending mercy. We will receive the elements from the center aisle. There is grape juice in the center ring. We have little blue circles around them. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let's pray. Jesus, our bright morning star, we give you thanks that you have fed us well through the bread and wine of, our, of your supper. May it enable us to shine brightly in all the dark places of our world with your love, justice, and peace. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. Who has a song? Forty. What are we singing on forty? What child is this? Her?
So earlier, when I don't know who it was, Callan or Jordan said, we didn't finish the book, right? So we did, we did the part from Luke on Christmas Eve. And then it makes a switch. And my book switches over to Matthew. And that's our, our reading um, for today. That is from the second chapter of Matthew that tells us the rest of the Christmas story that we know. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. For you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they heard the king, they set out, and there... There ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. On January 6th, this coming Thursday, we celebrate the day of Epiphany. On Epiphany and in the Sundays that follow, we celebrate the inbreaking of God's light. The readings help us understand that the manifestation of God is for all people, everywhere. This is a message of radical inclusivity. The Magi are drawn from the East to come to pay homage to the Christ child. They who were once far off are now embraced by the one true God who, was sent, who has sent a Savior into the world. Likewise, Paul reports in Ephesians that he has been given grace to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ, just as Isaiah had foretold that nations shall come to God's light. In this inclusive reality, everyone is welcome. And so are their gifts. Just as the Magi showed respect for Christ with gold, frankincense, and myrrh, we can offer our gifts and talents to further the brightness of God's dawn. Whatever we bring, no matter how simple, it is accepted and used for a mighty purpose. There's also a sense of joy at this epiphany. When the Magi saw that the star they were following had stopped over the place where the Christ child lay, they were overwhelmed with joy. The angel had declared to the shepherds that the newborn child would bring good news of great joy for all people. Now again, Christ brings joy to all. Christianity is truthfully a joyful religion. Through word and sacrament, we're invited to rise and shine, for our light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. Fed and nourished in worship, we are sent to bear, sent forth to bear witness and to let our little lights shine. 
Let's stand. May God direct your ways in peace, make you abound in love for one another and for all, and strengthen your hearts until the coming of our Lord Jesus. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. All right, I think we should sing We Three Kings. That's in your blue book. Somebody find me a number, 600 and something. 646. 646. downstairs. <laughs>